We're going to have a look at a few different types of microphones because we want to see how microphones vary in terms of their polar patterns and their frequency responses across different makes and models. Understanding this information gives you a way of being able to choose the right microphone for the right source, which is one of the finer points of recording. Whilst it's quite easy to learn how to record reasonably well to a basic level, when you get to more advanced levels of recording, you do start to use microphones a little bit like paintbrushes. Every microphone sounds a little bit different. And so whenever you consider recording a sound source, you tend to think quite carefully about which microphone you're going to use on that source. And there are a range of different considerations, as we'll see as we go through some of the microphones that we have. So we're going to look at dynamic microphones. And the first one that we'll look at is the AKG D112. Uh, this is really good for kick drum or bass guitar, low frequency type instruments. And you can see here one of the reasons for that is because it's got a pronounced bass boost. But also if you look further up the spectrum, it has a presence boost between 2 and 5 kilohertz. So that means that it has a fair amount of attack, but also it actually emphasizes the low frequencies, which is why it's good for these sources. If we look at the polar pattern for this mic, it's a cardioid pattern. So it's picking up mainly in front of the microphone and not to the rear of the microphone. Uh, you can see that here on this diagram, you can see the colored lines show its directional characteristics at different frequencies. And this is one of the things about microphone polar patterns is that they are not uniform across all frequencies. Now you tend to find that microphones become more directional as they get into their higher frequencies. So if we're looking at this diagram here, we can see the red line represents 125 hertz. So if you look at that diagram, you'll see that the response pattern, the polar pattern is wider on that red line at 125 hertz. If we look up at a higher frequency at say 16,000 hertz at the top, which is the dotted blue line, we can see that the polar pattern is far tighter. It's much narrower. So that shows you how polar pattern does change across the frequency range. And typically microphones are more directional at high frequencies than they are at low frequencies. Notice also that this microphone has a frequency response which is stated as 20 hertz to 17,000 hertz or 17 kilohertz. So you can see that it actually has a response that goes down very low. We'll have a look at a few of the other mics. The next mic that we're going to look at is the Shure SM57. It's a dynamic microphone and it's cardioid pickup pattern and it's listed from 40 hertz to 15,000 hertz or 15 kilohertz. Uh, it's often used for things like snare drums, guitar cabinets and percussion. You can see from the frequency response curve a very prominent mid-range boost. You can see it there around about 5 kilohertz or so. And this really sounds very pronounced on this microphone. You'll also notice that it falls away there above 15 kilohertz very sharply. And also if you look at the low end of the microphone, you'll see that it also starts to fall away underneath about 180 hertz and it's 10 dB down by the time it gets to 40 hertz. So it doesn't have a lot of low end on this microphone, but what it does have is a lot of mid range presence, which makes it a very popular and a very very good choice for sounds that need a lot of mid-range definition. Once again you'll find that the SM57 also exhibits a different polar response at different frequencies being more directional at higher frequencies. You'll see there 250 hertz being the widest pickup and it narrowing as it gets up to 10 kilohertz. Another dynamic mic that we use is the Shure Beta 58A. Uh, this is another very common microphone. You'll see it used all the time on live vocals, uh, but it can also be used as a guitar cabinet and snare. It's used a little bit less in the studio than it is in live, where it's used just about everywhere, but it can be a very handy studio microphone. If we look at the frequency response of this microphone, it's really quite interesting. The first thing that you'll see is that there is a pronounced presence boost that starts somewhere around about 3 kilohertz and gives a broad boost up to around 10 kilohertz. So it really does have a sort of a pronounced brightness to this microphone, which really helps a lot on vocals. 
The other really interesting thing that you'll see about this microphone is the difference in the bass response and you'll see a number of curves on this diagram here. What it's showing you is the bass response at different distances. Now what we're seeing here is something called the proximity effect which is the tendency of microphones to emphasize bass frequencies when you get very close to them. This is a very common characteristic of any directional microphone. Less directional microphones tend to not have a lot of proximity effect whereas directional microphones will almost always have a pronounced proximity effect. So that means as you get close to them the amount of bass that is being picked up will be increased. So it'll have the tendency of things sounding a lot boomier or a lot bassier when you're close to it. So have a look at this diagram here and you can see various curves in the bass from 3 millimeters, 25 millimeters, 51 millimeters and then 0.6 meters or 60 centimeters. And you'll see when you look at those curves that the closer that you are to the microphone, look at the 3 millimeter curve, you have a really very substantial bass boost. And then 25 millimeters, it's still very substantial. It doesn't really start to flatten off on the curve until you get further away than about 5 centimeters or 51 millimeters. And then you can see as you get further away to 0.6 meters, then the bass response falls away quite substantially. And you'll hear this very dramatically with this microphone if you use it. Uh, if you're using it at a distance, you'll find that there is very little bass at all. Okay, and as you move in close to it, then that bass will really start to rise. It'll be quite thick sounding when you're actually quite close to the microphone. So that's an example of the proximity effect. And all microphones will exhibit this, uh, particularly directional ones. But it also shows you how you can use the proximity effect as a creative tool to control the amount of low end or bass in the sound source that you're recording.